The MBTA, one of North America's most sprawling commuter rail networks. With over 400 miles of track, more than 120 locomotives, and almost 500 cars, naturally the MBTA has many places where equipment is stored and maintained. So today, we will be setting out to document and explain the purpose and function of every important yard on the MBTA system. For this video, I'll be focusing on the commuter rail only, but if this video does well, maybe I'll make another one for the subway system too. This video will not include MBTA's layover yards, otherwise known as the small yards at the end of every line for storing trains between runs, as these yards are relatively small and boring, so therefore it's not necessary to include them in this video. In addition to layover yards, I will also not include many small sidings and spurs that are seldom used, such as the Saugus Industrial Track, Yard 10, and the 10.8 Riverside Switch. Anyways, with no further ado, this is the MBTA Commuter Rail, a comprehensive aerial tour. Disclaimer, all spots in this video are on private property and you should not visit them. I made this video so those who can't see into the yards for themselves with a drone can watch this video and not break the law to see them. To make it clear, I did not trespass to get this footage, I merely flew my drone over these yards from places near the yards that are public property. Additionally, a few yards in this video are in restricted airspaces. All flights were approved by the FAA and all necessary precautions were taken when flying in said restricted airspaces. With that said, enjoy the video. Let's start up north and make our way south. Surprisingly, the northernmost yard on the system that isn't a layover or a boarding siding is the West Cambridge Maintenance of Way Facility. Located around milepost BF5 on the Fitchburg route, the West Cambridge Maintenance of Way Facility, also known as the WCMF, is the main shops and HQ for the engineering department's fleet of work vehicles such as high rails, trucks, and other pieces of MOW equipment. This is where MOW equipment is stored and maintained, in addition to being where the wash train cars are stored during most times of the year when they aren't used. This yard is the headquarters for all MOW operations on the system, but there are many smaller MOW yards across the system in Abington, Reedville, Worcester, Fitchburg, and Salem. Believe it or not, this yard served as a temporary maintenance facility for all equipment on the system for a brief period in the early 1990s when the BET was being built, which we'll get to very soon. This yard is planned to be closed up in the coming years as part of the consolidation of operations to Iron Horse Park in North Billerica, as the City of Cambridge wants to develop this land differently. So I suppose if for whatever reason you want to see this yard, check it out while you still can. Four miles south is quite a change in scenery from the WCMF. We went from modern apartments and trendy shops and restaurants in Alewife to the gritty industrial zone known as the Inner Belt here in Somerville. This is what is known as the MBTA Commuter Rail Maintenance Facility, also known as the Boston Engine Terminal or BET. Originally built in 1995, this is the largest yard in the system with 15 tracks of shop space and 6 tracks of layover space capable of storing 12 train sets. The BET is where the MBTA does many in-house overhauls on locomotives and it's where many employees on the north side start and end their day. The BET is located just a mile north of North Station, and it's not that far from I-93 either, so it's one of the few MBTA yards that isn't kind of tucked away from society. In addition to the shop tracks and layover tracks, there's also an unnamed track, which I call the BET Bypass, which is used for storage of equipment and freight trains such as the late B721 and Pan Am B01. This track is connected to another track where B01's power is usually stored. There's also a bridge here known as the High Line, which is due to get replaced soon. This line is how the Lowell Line gets to Boston, effectively surrounding the BET with rail lines, earning this part of Somerville the name Interbuilt. Below the elevated I-93 is the Orange Line track, an NHN siding for Boston Sand and Gravel, and two abandoned Bud RDCs, which you can learn more about by clicking this video in the top right corner. I got lucky enough to catch a glimpse of operations here at the BET of the in-house switcher, leading as a GMTX leaser unit that MBTA has been leasing due to a shortage of non-revenue service engines. This unit is pulling out from track 12 to pick up some locomotives on track 9. After making it far enough out, it reverses back onto track 12 to hook up to a GP40MC. In addition to the GP40MC, this switcher has also picked up an F40 and an HSP, as it is moving locomotives to connect them to sets of cars. Notice the two genset locomotives in the foreground, MBTA's two troublesome work units. Purchased new in 2009, these units have been nothing but trouble since the day they entered service, just like today where the GMTX leasers are doing all the work switching out the BET. Also of note is 1056, which seems to be burning oil and spewing bluish smoke everywhere. Normal stuff for the BET, heck this building has caught on fire like two or three times in the past few years. Continuing our journey south, we find ourselves at the surprisingly small shops and layover yard in Southie, less than a mile away from Boston's South Station. This area is known as Southampton Street Yard, named after its namesake street just south of here. SHSY is home to a bunch of layover tracks used by the MBTA, a tiny shop that is almost never used, and a loop track which is often used by Amtrak and MBTA to turn trains around. 
In addition to this MBTA stuff, Amtrak also has a large engine shop over here. Southampton Street is really only used for short-term layover trains during off-peak times. The shops don't really do much at all. If you continue going south on the Fairmount line past SHSY, you'll eventually end up in the small Boston neighborhood of Reedville, which is home to one of MBTA's largest yards in addition to three busy lines, including Amtrak's Northeast Corridor. Here at Reedville is a small shop mostly used for small repairs and a large layover yard. Reedville is the main yard where train sets are built for the south side. As you can see, there are a few switching locomotives in here, such as this GMTX Leaser and Mastod 1136, both of which are on Reedville switcher duty. Aside from being a small shop that doesn't do much, this is essentially just a layover yard, but still a very important yard for trains on the south side. So that's your overview of MBTA yards used for the commuter rail. Maybe if this video does well, I'll make an MBTA subway yard tour, but until then, thanks for watching.